or seven from fries, whereas you know with the new core they have like 20, 30 choices easily. Okay, which is also which kind of brings up an interesting point too. I was talking to uh, Larry Larry Dumas you know, the other day, only yesterday, and he was upgrading his system. He was upgrading his system, um, and oh no, no, his old system died. The motherboard died, you know, taking the power supply with it, or one. It, it's I, I cannot. He could. He did not know which one took down which one. But anyway, they were both dead. But he thought that his processor was still good, and the memory modules are still good. So he was asking, you know, well, you know, should I just, you know, what should I do with these? I mean, because he he wanted to upgrade the system. He didn't want to keep the same processor. And I told him, well, why don't you sell it to me? You know, because I can put it into the Moodle server. The Moodle server has a set socket seven seven five uh, motherboard, so and we can we can upgrade it. And you know, and I said, you know, well, why don't you give you, uh, those components to me for fifty bucks? You know, because you know, hardly anyone you know wants to get you know socket socket seven seven five processors these days. When you look up on eBay, you know, um, not eBay. If you look up on uh, Newegg, okay. For 100 bucks or so, you know, a Core i um, i3 processor will probably have about the same speed as a Q6600 quad core processor. Okay, for most applications. Okay, for certain applications, it's, it's even going to be faster. So I said, you know, why don't you give the memory module and the processor to me for 50 bucks, you know, and then we'll waive your next year's, you know, Moodle, you know, cost. <clears throat> and he almost went for it. And then I just reminded myself, go like, well. Maybe not. Let's go check on eBay and see how much money people are asking or, or they're bidding for those you know, particular components. And I was surprised. People were paying or they're bidding at least up to 120 bucks for a Q6600 quad core uh, processor. I was blown away. I was just blown away by the fact that people are still paying upwards of 100 bucks for a core two type the you know, quad core processor. Now the Q6600 is particularly an older design because of all the quad core processors, this was one of the first ones. In other words, there are faster and better quad core processors even with the core two generation. And I was just you know surprised that people are still paying 120 bucks for a older processors a processor like that used. We're not talking about something that is brand new in box. We're talking about stuff that is extracted out of a motherboard. I don't know why, but you know, but that's the way it was. So Larry was kind of glad that I looked up on eBay, and he <laughs> so now he's going to take some pictures and sell on eBay. Is there memory on this? Hmm. Is there memory? Okay. No, this is just the processor. Oh. The memory module, you know, he has four gig of memory modules. And I was surprised that even that is worth like at least 50 bucks on eBay. So apparently a lot of people are just you know, upgrading their existing motherboards. So they, they're getting a faster processor and just more RAM. And they're going after these you know, used items like there's no tomorrow. Because, you know, because I mean, you go to New Egg, you cannot buy DDR2 memory. There's, there's not a whole lot of choices of DDR2 memory anymore. So that kind of gives you an idea of you know how, why you know making your system is upgradable is, it can be useful. <clears throat> okay, so when you specify the motherboard, you have to consider at least the socket type and the memory type. Okay, so these two are main main you know, major deciding factors. Okay, so on the motherboard, you also get PCI you know uh, slots. PCIe stands for PCI Express. So you need a 16-lane type for video cards. Now, when you specify a video card, you also have to specify what kind of performance do you need. That's the question. Okay. Even if with um, Photoshop, you know, Photoshop specifies that you need OpenGL support and stuff like that. The onboard, you know, uh, graphics card or graphics uh, chipset, you know, would do just about anything that you need anyway. Okay, so the only time you need an extra card on top of whatever is already supported by the processor or the chipset is when you're into gaming. 
or into you know, 3D uh, rendering and stuff like that. If you're only using it for word processing, I don't think you know, the graphics card would be useful at all. Even with Photoshop, I don't think the graphics card is gonna be that useful. Okay, you know, there's no need to upgrade it to an external graphics card. Okay. Any questions about the graphics card part? You know, how you may or may not want to you know, add an extra graphics card to the system. No questions? Okay. <coughs> X8 to X1 for other types of expansion. In other words, you know, if the built-in devices or the chipset that you have on the motherboard does not give you everything that you need, you can use you know mostly times eight, you know, all the way down to times one, you know, eight lane versus one lane PCI Express slots to expand your system. Um, one thing that you can consider is you know, if you think that down the line you might want to get the hardware rate because of the performance as well as the reliability, you want to have a you know, eight lane PCI Express you know, uh, Express card slot available because that's what it takes to run a, uh, a, a hardware rate uh, accessory card. So those are things for future expansion, but having those around can be handy when you need to expand the card. <clears throat> so I'll just kind of write down a few things here. Hardware RAID. You can also use it to set up USB 3.0. You know, in other words, if there's a motherboard that you are consider considering, everything is good, except it only has USB 2.0. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it if you have an expansion slot available because you can always get an USB 3 expansion card and add USB 3 capability to your system later on. And when USB 3.0 becomes you know, like commonplace or the de facto standard instead of USB 2.0, these peripheral cards will be cheap. I mean, they will be you know, really inexpensive. But you do need to make sure you have the expansion slot available on the motherboard to do that later. Okay, so that's the catch. When you specify the motherboard, you're not talking about stuff that you need today. You also have to think about what will I need down the line before I obsolete the entire system itself. Okay. Any other questions so far? No? Now, as, as far as sound cards are concerned or the sound is concerned, are there any specific need to add an external card, a uh, PCI Express card for sound? You can do a, use a USB external one these days, in a, and the, no, a, the signal to noise ratio of a USB one is better than the one on inside the case itself. So I don't think sound is a good reason to, you know, for expansion cards like that. <clears throat> So that's that. Now some motherboards or most motherboards will give you at least one PCI slot. The PCI, the one single PCI slot is mostly for backward compatibility issues. In other words, if you have a PCI card today with your system that is that you use for a specific purpose, you know, when you switch to a mother, new motherboard, you know, this PCI slot will enable your system to use the same card as before. But other than that, for legacy and you know, backward compatibility, PCI itself is not really that useful anymore. Okay, and we can now talk about SATA, you know, which is a topic that we could, we have to keep coming back. Okay, number of connections. How many you know SATA connectors do you need? It all depends on how you want to use the system, okay? Four is enough for most systems. Okay, six to eight for software RAID. And that's about it, I mean. The other part of SATA you can also think about is you know, three gigabits per second versus six gigabits per second. Very few motherboards up out there even today, has six gigabit per second support of SATA, SATA. 
but there are good reasons why you know six gigabit per second is not as popular as let's say USB 3.0. Many new motherboards have USB 3.0 already. Yep. So why did you go to software rate? Because you can run on hardware rates off the motherboard. When when you run RAID from the motherboard, it is almost all the time a software-based you know, RAID because you know, the, the RAID controller itself is a, is a chip all by itself. And it's made by LSI. There's a company called LSI, and they make you know, RAID controller chips. Motherboards do not have that chip integrated onto it. You know, on, onto it. So whatever they say, you know, if, you know, there, it's, it's all software it's based off RAID. Based. Software yeah. rates are not really that, that reliable. They're good, they're fine. You know, they're just slower. They are not reliable from the perspective of if your software fault is faulty, right. then the rate itself is at risk. You know, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of having a rate system for it. But if you have a stable, you know, software platform like in you know, Linux, um, software rate is fine, it is reliable. It depends on the chipset. A lot of times, you know, it's the chipset and the driver that makes it, you know, reliable or not reliable. Um, the problem that I had was with the chipset. It's, it's a Marvel chipset, so the chipset itself was not you know, reliable, and then the driver apparently was not reliable either. But as soon as I switched back to the motherboard supported the you know, RAID, it was fine. You know, it was slower, just a little bit slower, but it was fine. <coughs> So the next question is three gigabit per second versus six gigabits per second. Okay. The reason why most motherboards, even today, do not have a lot of support of six gigabit per second is twofolded. One, not a whole lot of chipsets have that available yet. Okay, not from Intel, not from Nvidia. But the second thing is it doesn't buy you anything. Okay? But tech, six gigabits is twice as fast as three gigabits per second. You're absolutely right. Now, we are talking about, you know, the highway, you know, going from three lanes to six lanes here, when there's no traffic around, okay? And you're driving a geometric, okay? Does it, does it make it go a, a whole lot faster? I don't know, let's say my geometro maxes out at 80 miles per hour. Whether there are three lanes or six lanes on the highway, doesn't matter especially when there's no traffic, right? And that's basically what it is. A regular hard drive that you buy, a consumer-grade hard drive, even when it, is, when it claims to support the new six gigabit per second um, interface, that is simply saying that the tires of the car is capable of going uh, you know, 200 miles per hour. But the hard drive itself, you know, which is limited by the seat time and also the rotational <coughs> delay, it's still a Geo Metro. So you're putting Corvette tires onto a Geo Metro, driving on a six-lane highway no, with no traffic, as opposed to a three-lane highway. <laughs> Does it make any difference? Nope. Makes absolutely no difference. Yep. Would it make a difference if you had a solid state? Yes. If you go to SSD, then you will start to see some differences. But even so, you will be pushing it. Okay, you have to get, get some really expensive and high-speed SSDs to start to see any difference. Where it will make the most difference is when you switch to SAS type SSDs. SAS stands for Serial Attached SCSI. And within that particular bus standard, they also have SSDs that are designed only for server installations. So we are talking about stuff that Google would use in its own data centers. Now, when you upgrade to that type of equipment, then yes, six gigabit per second will give you, it will you know, utilize you know, six gigabits per second, okay? But then you cannot, but it's not SATA anymore. Remember what I said, you know, at that point, it is called, you know, SCSI, it's Serial Attached SCSI, S-A-S, so it's not even the same bus standard anymore, okay? So for all practical purposes, at least